How can we build a subscription model out of pretty much any business in the world? Let's put an association on it because people like to be with other people that are like them that like the things they like. It's pretty brilliant, right? Let's look at how you can go and innovate in terms of business model. So in terms of business model, there are 14 different business models that pretty much cover everything. And if you drill down, you'll see that everyone is covered. For example, landlord, tenant, and broker are both covered by Airbnb's model and Uber's model, for example. So it's a broker in that will, will facilitate introduction of these people to you as a broker and landlord tenant in that you own a car or you own a house and we are going to put somebody in it to rent it for a period of time. So even if you might think, well, that's only real estate, it's really not if you drill down. So there's an affiliate model, there's a pay as you go model. Uh, you can be a publisher, you can do franchising, you can have manufacturer that each that has sales reps that are out selling. You can just wholesale direct uh, as a middle person. You can broker deals. You can have a reseller with a value added reseller uh, model. You can be a retailer, you can do network marketing, uh, all you can eat, meaning it's one fee and you get everything uh, as much as you need, usually in data, uh, but also at buffets. Uh, you can be a direct seller or have a subscription business. So I like to look at these as models and have that as the first thing that I'm thinking about. And then the second thing that I'm thinking about is what are the different pricing models? And so we know there's free with ad support, there's freemium with upsells based on value. If it's worth more, we charge a whole lot more. Uh, tiered volume, we give discounts or charge less as people consume more. Features and add-ons, so there's uh, like a car would be a good, when you're in the finance department, they're saying, do you want floor mats with that? Uh, low price leader, Walmart. Uh, MSRP map, manufacturer suggested retail price versus minimum advertised price. Uh, free with paid support cost or a time cost plus or times cost, having a portfolio suite of products like Microsoft Office or Adobe Creative Suite, commodity based like golf balls or rubber bands. We'll sell you the razor and then uh, we make our money off the blades. We'll give you the cell phone for free, but you sign a contract. Premium uh, and luxury or discount. So those are kind of the, the pricing models. And so if you take those business models and you take those pricing models and you put them on a business model innovation map, it looks kind of like this. So I like to say, what's the primary, secondary, and tertiary? What's the first, second, and third model for the business model? And then how can we apply the different pricing models to that? And if you think about this, that means you've got 14 different business models and 14 different pricing models that you can mix and match to create completely new businesses. And I've never seen, uh, I, I, I never was able to find anything that, that did that. So I built this and I've just, I think it's amazing for coming up with different ways to think about your business because you can just pop different things in. So for Uber, they're a broker model as a business model as their first model and their pricing model on connecting drivers with passengers as a broker is a volume. They charge 15 to 30% brokerage fee, which is I just heard from the Uber people has gone up to 50% now. The secondary model for business is landlord tenant. The drivers are renting their car space to passengers and the pricing is tiered. The first pricing model is it's tiered based on the type of car. Do you want a black car or do you want an Uber pool? It's gonna be more for one than the other. But then the secondary pricing model is the farther we go, it's a volume model. The more miles you consume, the more we're gonna charge. And then the tertiary model is the thing that we all hate, which is called surge pricing. Well, it's a time of day, so you know, let's just screw you even harder for that, okay? So that's three pricing models layered on top of one business model, which is layered on top of another business model. And then over on the tertiary side, um, they'll do affiliates. So they'll pay referral fees for new customers and referral fees for new drivers from time to time. So this is something that you can take with your business and really think about how to innovate, because innovation can be really hard if you can't systematize it, and this allows you to do that. So for survival life, we have a model of direct seller. We sell gadgets that people want. Our pricing model is Perry's brilliant innovation, the tripwire, right? The low price thing that gets you in, and then they're 11 times more likely to take the next offer. 
The secondary pricing model is cost plus or times cost. We do upsells for additional products for some sort of profit margin. And then our secondary business model is, again, Perry Innovation, the association. How, do, how can we build a subscription model out of pretty much any business in the world? Let's put an association on it, because people like to be with other people that are like them, that like the things they like. It's pretty brilliant, right? So subscription was FPA membership. Value-based model. And then a tiered membership levels. And then features and add-ons, so additional add-on benefits. And then the third model is as publisher, with uh, free and ad-supported, because we've got all these websites and all this content. So we're a publisher, and we have uh, ads that we sell on that, as well as sponsorships. So when you're doing yours and you have a model for this, you have a sheet to do this in your materials, just put the, take the sheets out for business models and pricing models and play with them and see what you come up with for all of the different products and profit centers in your business and I think you'll come up with some really, really cool stuff. Particularly if you go through the strategy and trend stuff before you get into it. So if you're thinking, how can I take advantage of that trend, it doesn't really work with my current business model, then just run the business model innovation map.